Hi everyone, it's me again, and today we once again are gonna start a new visual novel, well, new on my channel at least. This is Onigoko, which was developed by Alcott and originally released in Japan in 2011, and the English version was released 10 years later in 2021. By the way, the title Onigoko is the Japanese word for tag, like the game tag. I wonder what this VN is about. Well, let's start and find out. Beneath the beautiful perfect sphere of the moon, a horde of masked men passionately called out to a certain someone. With those foul voices at my back, I dashed through the passage that connected the main and secondary school buildings. The silver moon hung in the sky as the azalea swayed by the roadside, and a mild yet salty breeze brushed against my cheeks. This would make for quite the wonderful locale if not for the foghorn booming through the area. In all of the commotion I... What? A ninja? Whoops! Stood around for too long. While engrossed in the nighttime scenery, I was surrounded by a collection of masked men. The Sakagami Ninja Squadron! After flipping the switch for you know what at my hips, I kicked up the dirt beneath my heel and headed for the passageway. What's the you know what? The only mask which dances in the dark of night, and the Shuten Doji of lore who subs on the moon's reflection. The world famous master thief, Phantom Thief Ura, has arrived. Is this the protagonist? <laughs> Haha, <laughs> sorry, but that's exactly why I'm here today. This ought to be enough to attract a certain imposter. Oh, nothing, it's personal. I boldly declared with the moon as my backdrop. Damn, this felt incredible. Announcing my name at the top of my lungs was surely the most exhilarating moment for me whenever I was out on the prowl. A group of ninjas cornering a phantom thief? That's quite a sight, no matter how you slice it. I flashed a fearless smile beneath my mask and reached into my breast pocket. The ninjas instantly stood at the ready. Just chill out. What could I possibly do with this? 
Yes, I had retrieved a flask from my pocket. Without this, I'd be useless. The moon looks spectacular tonight. Would anyone care for a drink? Oh, how scary! Someone's pissy! I ignore their angry cries and enjoyed the contents of my flask. The 40 proof liquor burned my throat and set my whole body on fire the instant it hit my stomach. For that matter, literal fumes shot out of my rear. Hell yeah! I'm amped and ready to go. The what? Yes, but you're too late. I can fly! I revved up the Tsuzura Sparrow, the miniature jetpack I had fired up previously, and descended into the sky. My target was the roof of the school gate. If I were to relaunch from there, today's job would be complete. The ninjas frantically chased after me. However, they truly had noticed too late. I already reached the roof. Who's this? War! Someone cried out the moment I landed. Worse yet, they aimed straight for my head with a wooden sword without warning. She's cute. Huh? You are waiting to ambush me? That is surprising. Do you honestly believe I'm that stupid? Then, as a daring smile crossed the girl's lips, she readied her sword and closed the distance between us in a single leap. Whoa! I like the music here. I grabbed the baton at my waist, or my Oni baton, to fend off her sword. We clashed several times before I backed away. However, she refused to let me rest and attacked with unwavering determination. But I'm not a masochist. I'm getting really tired of hearing that. So I guess this is not the first time they met. Haha! <laughs> Someone's feisty! Do you really think you can catch me all by yourself? So I guess this is not their first encounter, huh? <laughs> this is pointless. Her defensive arts were pretty impressive, but I wasn't a phantom thief just for show. I had faced competition like this more times than I care to count. There we go. <laughs> a gentle parry of a sword with my baton sent the girl off balance. There was so much momentum that it seemed to send her sword hurling through the air. How disappointing! The descendant of Momotaro really is a joke. If you really wanted to catch me, you should have brought one of your retainers with you. Is that right? In that case, your fairy tale ends here. I lunged at her chest and flipped the switch on my baton. Batten. My only baton could send up to 100,000 volts of electricity into its target and render them motionless upon contact. Wouldn't that kill a person? Sorry, young lady, but I've got a jet. I look forward to your future growth. And who is this? What? W what the hell? I immediately dodged the sudden attack from the side. The saying, by a hair's breath, could not have been more true in this scenario. A lone girl's fist had drilled a huge crater into the spot I had been occupying moments before. What? She's that strong? You're... 
Standing in the middle of the cloud of dust was a golden-eyed girl clad in a Japanese kimono. Where could she have stored enough power to smash through a roof in that tiny body of hers? Who is Kana? I see. That power. Does that mean you are Kintaro? So she Kintaro or Suzuka? What's this? A falling out? Don't sweat it. If you'd like, why don't we just pretend this little incident never happened? Violence is never the answer. Then again, if you've got booze, that's an entirely different story. What's a kaister? I see, that's too bad. I'm sure. After setting loose a flash grenade, I approached the girl in the kimono. Take that! And poked her straight in the tit. Huh? Why did her appearance suddenly change? She even got the bow out of nowhere. Huh? She fainted. Uh, what? She suddenly went red in the face and flopped right over. In that brief moment, she seemed completely different from how she was acting before. Time for me to split then, see ya. There isn't a thief alive in any place or time who would wait around when told. Unless you want me to give those titties of yours a good rubbing, being Momotaro's descendant, you sure do have a nice ripe pair of peaches on you. Nahaha, <laughs> you're so cute when you blush, Sherlock. Akechiku? What is this Persona 5? I slipped between them and quickly leaped over the fence. Then I switched my sparrow, Suzura, once on once again. Haha! <laughs> Farewell, my dear! Looks like you're it. Looks like you're it this time. The girl hung from the fence with her sword brandished, yelling angrily. I glanced back at her as I etched a white trail of vapor against the black canvas of the sky. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, me. The mystic treasures? Oh. I guess these are the four herons of this Vienna. There's one which there's one with twin tails too. My favorite. There's even one with twin tails. My favorite. Oh, and there are twin tails. Oh, twin tails. Who's talking? Ow! I took a strong blow to the head and woke up with a start. When I came to, I fell out of bed and whacked my head against the floor. Did I fall out of bed half asleep? No way, nope. 
Yes, I was a light sleeper, but there was no way in hell I tossed and turned so badly I could pull off a German suplex first thing in the morning. Onichan? I have a little sister. Hmm? When I looked up, I saw white panties. A girl in an unfamiliar uniform was looking down at me. This appeared to be the offender who struck me down from heaven into the pits of hell. Sorry to ask this when you are in such a good mood, but who are you? I can't say I recall having this sort of sister that would smack her brother onto the floor. If you're going to wake me up, then bring a childhood friend or something with you next time. That would be much more appealing. Ugh, you really are my sister hitting right where it hurts the second I wake up. Opening ceremony? Ha, ah, that really takes me back. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you've got a point there. My sister Aoi and I were going to a new school starting today. She was a newly enrolled first year and I was transferring in as a second year. Although we were in different years, our circumstances were the same. There was no possible way either of us could have memories of a school we had yet to attend. That reminds me, this is the first time I've seen you wearing that uniform. You've been too shy to show me until now. Hmm. I gave my sister a good once-over. She was wearing Miyajima Private Academy's uniform, the one used by the school we would be attending starting today. She wore her brand new yet still starchy uniform and a bright, angelic smile. This was surprisingly. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. That uniform looks great on you. Yeah, you know very well that I am not the sort of guy who lies. Man, she sounded really happy. Seeing as how I was her brother, I was a tad biased. However, I did find Aoi's smile to be genuinely adorable. It made me want to spoil her rotten. Then again, your sex appeal still got a long way to go. Yeah, your boobs are still kinda small and you still wear white panties. You're not gonna be turning any guy's head anytime soon if you keep that up. Are you sure about that? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I'm not attracted to you in the slightest. You're not a girl, but a creature known as a little sister. If you're gonna wear them anyway, why not go with striped panties or something pink with frills? I think that would give them more personality. Striped panties are especially great. They're cute and really pop perfect for a girl like you. Yeah, yeah. It would appear I had hurt Aoi Tan's feelings. She always got so offended whenever I teased or treated her like a kid, which only proved how much more growing she had left to do. Ugh, I feel awful. Hung sober? Maybe. I felt slightly dizzy when I got up and stretched. To top it all off, I was unbelievably nauseated. I prepared some booze before quote-unquote work yesterday to ensure this wouldn't happen, but I ended up going the whole night without a single swig. Wait, he gets a hangover when he doesn't drink alcohol?
Damn it, we are related. So why the hell does this not happen to you too? Great grandma indeed. I'd never met her in person, but our great grandmother had married into the Urabe family and never got hung sober. I, on the other hand, really took after our great grandfather, so being hung sober had a more pronounced effect on me. Well, it was thanks to him that I was able to become the Phantom Thief Ura, so it wasn't all bad. Okay, I can't get dressed by myself, but I need to strip first. Starting this spring, Aoi and I would be living on Miyajima Island. Miyajima was an archipelago residing in the Ezo Bay of southern Japan and surprisingly more than half of its residents were students attending Miyajima Academy. The academy itself was a private institution positioned at the island's elevated center and was about a 10 minute walk away from the boys' bamboo dorm, which was where I lived. After leaving the dorms or one of the homes in the nearby residential area, you would walk up a hilly path and find yourself at Miyajima Academy. Aoi was staying at the girls' bamboo dorm, which was a fair distance away from the boys' dorm, but was close enough to traverse on foot. With her being so close, she could spare the extra time to show up at my place before heading to school. This is what I get for acting like we had all the time in the world. After I'd put on a little show for Aoi, we were down to the last few seconds before we were officially late. We had to run, or we'd never make it in time. <sighs> Damn it, I can't believe I don't even have time for my morning drink. Oh wow, you got me a drink? That's my Aoi Tan. I slid the straw into the carton Aoi handed me and gulped the liquor down as we ran. Buddha! I spat out every last drop as hard as I could. The alcohol, which spewed from my mouth like a fountain, sparkled and shone in the morning sunlight. <laughs> That's not what you should be saying here, Aoi, this isn't liquor. It's mirin! What's mirin? Uncompromising sweetness mixed with a savory aroma of fried eel filled my nose. Fried eel? This was the unmistakable flavor of the sake-like substitute with higher sugar and lower alcohol content. Mirin. I acknowledge its tenacity, but this isn't the flavor I'm looking for. She could call me whatever she wanted, but my tongue would not accept any substitutions. Even if the world were to end tomorrow, that was the one and only hang-up I wasn't about to let go of. I'm pretty sure mom sent some rice wine. What happened to that? What the hell? One of these days that old geezer's gonna pay. Grrr, hit me right where it hurts. It was true, my grandpa was the one who was always making me cry. Unsurprising considering he was my master and the second generation Phantom Thief Uda. What the fuck? Big boss? Is that you? Come at me, grandpa! Oh, 
Ja, cute Outfit. Let's do this! Resounding battle cries and overflowing power. Grandpa and I put those words into our blazing fists and traded blows imbued with our entire bodies and souls. To prevent the mystic treasures from falling into the wrong hands. Mysterious tools created by quote unquote Oni in ancient times. If used incorrectly, they will bring calamity upon the world. So, Which is why we, the members of the Urabe family, Aoi watched as the impact of our fists colliding sent shockwaves that eradicated all of the surrounding trees. Holy shit. It probably wasn't that impressive in reality, but that was roughly how our conversation went down at the time. Thanks in advance for your understanding. Shortly thereafter, while supporting my battered body, Grandpa said, Yoika Kesuke, Urabe no Ningen wa umaretsuki, Shojin tekna shintai no ryoko sonomi ni yado shite oru. Sore wa hito o kanta ni ayameru koto no deki no, Masa ni oni no yona chikara. Hiho to onajuku, Tsukai kata o ayamareba hiyeki o motarasu daro. I know, I will only use it to carry out my mission as the Phantom Thief Ura. I will defend the mystic treasures from the clutches of evil and use them to help those in need. I will use my demonic powers for those purposes and those purposes alone. Right, I'm a man too. Once I've set my peace, I will never waver. <laughs> Does that mean? In that moment, as I took the Oni mask from his hands, the third generation Phantom Thief Ura was born. It had been three years since Aoi and I were left in charge of scouring the land to collect and protect the mystic treasures. The mystic treasures, both unique in their appearances and abilities, contained a mysterious and unfathomable power inside them. The Oni baton I used was one such mystic treasure. There were even power-inducing foods and autonomous puppets among their ranks. It didn't help that they typically looked like trash to the untrained eye, leaving their owners oblivious to their hidden powers. To them, I was just some random dude in an Oni mask trying to steal what may as well have been their garbage. Many believed my great-grandfather, who earned the title Phantom Thief Buddha somewhere along the way, to be a considerable nuisance to the general public. The days and years eventually passed by, and roughly a month or so ago, a Phantom Thief Ura notice appeared at Miyajima Academy. It read, when the Azaleas bloom, Miyajima's mystic treasures shall be mine. Since I had no recollection of issuing said notice, my grandpa said, And that was why he shipped Aoi and me off to Miyajima. 
Our mission was to capture this fake Uda and protect the mystic treasures of Miyajima they were after. That was how Aoi and I ended up attending Miyajima Academy this spring. Yes, we were no mere students. We were here to carry out our mission as the third generation Phantom Thief Ura. Ura the third, huh? I wasn't obligated to inherit the title. Our father, an archaeologist, opted to support us, his children, from the sidelines instead of becoming a Phantom Thief himself. I could have followed my father's example and gone down a different path, but I didn't. I admired my grandpa and great-grandfather's way of life. Huh? Ow! Crap, I wasn't paying attention and bumped into someone. Are you okay? I quickly got back on my feet and had out a hand to the person I'd knocked over. Given how soft the person was when I collided into them, I had likely run into a girl. Maybe this was my chance to set a happy, embarrassing and heart-pumping story in motion. <laughs> what the heck? One day, I met a bear in the middle of the city. That's what I should be saying. Also, why the hell are you a bear? The bear man clenched his fist and declared that with unwavering conviction. What the hell was this guy's deal? Was it a seasonal thing? Were perverts like him wandering around like this because it was springtime? To top it off, we were even wearing the same uniform. If there were more wackos like him at the academy, then I wish they'd pack their bags and head straight back where they came from. そちらの美しいお嬢さんは君の妹君だね。え、美しいって私がですか？ああ、一目見てビビっときたね。まだあどけなさの残る顔立ちと穂の蚊に膨らんだ胸。そして健康そうなお見合いし。そう。Who would want to kidnap you? And he's really emphasizing the whole young thing. If you want someone to take you so badly, then go ahead and ask this guy. You seem to really tickle his pickle. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Wild bears like you should hire tail it back to the mountains, skip on the whole hibernating thing, and get straight to dying. What? What the heck? Hey, get away from her, you barbarian! Haha, <laughs> I'll turn you into curry and eat you! While the three of us were causing a commotion on the sidewalk, a dignified female voice called out to us. At that exact moment, Aoi and I, along with a costumed dude called Kumakichi, looked behind us. Oh, it's her! 
あなたはいつもそうなんだから少しはカナを見習いなさい The girl's long jet black hair fluttered in the wind behind her. You'd think she would be a model given her gorgeous figure and refined yet strong willed eyes, as well as her silky smooth ink colored hair. This was the same girl I'd faced off against on the rooftop last night. Yup, no doubt about it. Yeah, Akari, Ohayo. Ohayo, Janaiwayo. She nudged Kumakichi in the cheek with the bamboo sword case she'd been holding. Guess I was right. She was Kibitsumiya Akari, the only daughter of the Kibitsumiya family who governed over Miyajima. In Miyajima, the Kibitsumiya family acted as the leader of the so called Three Great Families. They were essentially this island's highest authority. These three great families were also burdened with the task of protecting the mystic treasures, and my family had numerous run ins with them over the last several decades. By all rights, we should have been allies and worked together, but our families had a bit of a falling out. As a result, like what happened yesterday, we were caught in this manhunt of sorts. Of course, our recent tussle was totally my fault. Oh, they know each other? What the heck, Aoi? You know her. Oh, is that so? Who would have thought the esteemed daughter of the Kibitsumiyas would be Aoi's neighbor? It seemed too good to be true if you ask me, but there was a chance Grandpa had pulled some strings behind the scenes to make it easier to get in touch with the three families. Oh, I haven't introduced myself yet, have I? I'm Aoi's big brother, Urabe Keisuke. Nice to meet you. I went to shake her hand, and after shooting me a mildly confused look, Kibitsumiya gently gripped my hand back. Kibitsumiya, Akariyo, kuchira koso yoroshiku ne, Urabi kun. Ah. Hmm. Dou shita no? Uh, well, I couldn't help but avert my gaze when she stared at me head on like that. This was blatantly obvious now that I could see her up close. But wasn't this girl insanely beautiful? That refreshing smile of hers was very cute too. Oh no, it's nothing like that. I was just thinking that you had an incredibly beautiful smile. Well, I meant it. She was blushing. This was the sort of shy reaction you'd hope to see from a girl your own age. Talk about adorable. Kesuke, to ka itta ka. Kimi no fou koso tonda nampa yaro dewa nai ka ne. That wasn't really my intention. Onichan, mukashi kara kou nan desu yo. Really? Then get ready to smack yourself, you perverted bear. You have to tell me if what I said made you angry or happy first. <laughs> K 
Kibitsumiya watched from the sidelines and smiled at our exchange, then looked up at the sky as if she were chasing the wind. When she did, a tidy bird came swooping from between the trees and softly landed on her shoulder. She stroked its beak with her fingertip and cast a gentle smile. The warm sunlight shone down on the girl with the long black hair as she played gently with the baby bird perched on her shoulder. Coupled with an invigorating breeze, it made for a truly picturesque sight. She really was beautiful. Just then, a mischievous wind blew through and flipped up her skirt. The material swayed lightly beneath the soft sun. Her tights clung to her voluptuous legs and soft-looking skin. She really was beautiful. Kibitsumiya remained still even after the wind stopped and the little bird flew away. Perhaps this wasn't enough to perturb her, just as her appearance suggested. No, that wasn't it. There was a cold sweat forming on her forehead. Her tense face was dyed as pink as a ripe peach. Yeah, I guess I did. A spring breeze blows past, bracing and revitalizing. What lay in its path? A gorgeous black beauty, lovely and sublime. No can do, it's burned straight into my retinas. It bothered her that much, her, her face and ears were beet red and she was fidgeting in place as she held down the hem of her skirt. Mm -hmm. A shy, blushing girl is always a sight for sore eyes, really gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling. That's right! Aren't you wearing those so that it doesn't matter if anyone does see? I see. Does that mean I'm your first? Kumakichi chimed in and revealed to the video camera he'd hidden away in his pocket. <laughs> she nodded at that threatening remark, drew the bamboo sword from its case and approached Kumakichi. Akari smacked Kumakichi silly, firmly gripping the back of his neck and dragged him somewhere private. Farewell, Kumakichi. I've forgotten about you already. They seem like good friends, so I'm sure she won't off him for real. 
I pegged her to be much more composed than that, but she was fairly aggressive toward Kumakichi. Based on our showdown yesterday, this violent side may have been more in line with Kibitsumiya's true personality.